This is a horsehair worm, and obviously, we gotta talk about it. We gotta talk about it. Obviously, we have a lot to talk about, so let's start at the beginning. Horsehair worms are first birthed in rivers as eggs. Eventually, they turn into larvae, like right here. And this is where it all gets started. Funny enough, the young larva's job is to get eaten. They literally want something to eat it. But not just like anything. They want this one specific creature to eat it. That is correct, the mayfly larvae. These little insects spend a good amount of their time in freshwater ecosystems like rivers. They play a very important role in these ecosystems as prey and predators. And for the horsehair worm, this is exactly where they wanna be, inside of that thing's belly. So much so that when horsehair worms reach maturity and are ready to reproduce, they release chemicals into the water just to attract these mayflies. Now, why would one of these undeveloped horsehair worms want a mayfly to eat them? That's like the question of the century, right? It's because they want to eventually be eaten by crickets, praying mantis, or other insects. Now, now I'll get to that in just a second. This video isn't even five minutes long. Just, just bear with me. Now, once the horsehair larva has been eaten and reaches the insides of a mayfly, things start to get interesting. Instead of being digested like regular prey, they begin to undergo a transformation. They secrete a substance that prevents them from being broken down like other foods. In other words, once they make it inside of the mayfly, they don't leave until they want to. And now, it's a waiting game. From that point, it waits for the mayfly to reach maturity. And guess what just so happens to like preying on adult mayflies? You guessed it, crickets. Do you guys see what I'm getting at here now? No? Well, me neither, but I'm gonna keep going. After the cricket eats the mayfly along with the horsehair worm, it is time to get down to business. The horsehair worm will begin to eat up all the cricket's stored fat. This process can go on for a while. I'm talking weeks, if not even over a month. The next step of malevolent business for these horsehair worms is mind control. Studies suggest that horsehair worms might influence cricket's levels of neurotransmitters such as serotonin. These neurotransmitters play a crucial role in regulating behavior and mood of insects, including crickets, which could easily lead to a lot of behavior changes. This kind of makes crickets walk aimlessly like a chicken with its head cut off. Eventually, the cricket will reach water, which is exactly where the horsehair worm wants to be. I know, it's pretty repetitive. The horsehair worm starts in water, then does all of this just to get back in the water. But now, the horsehair worm is fully grown and is ready to start that process all the way over again. I already know the question you have next. What happens to the crickets? In a few studies, over 80% of the crickets go on to live a normal life. A few may not make it, but for the most part, the crickets will survive and I guess they lose a little bit of fat from the horsehair worm eating all of it. So you could kind of call it a win-win situation when really it's just manipulation. And there you have it, the obnoxious mind-controlling horsehair worm in full action. I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. If you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe, leave a like, and let me know in the comments how you feel about this video. And as always guys, peace and love baby.